observation, this is sort of social anthropology, classic approach. Yeah, it's questionnaires or scientific measurement, if we want numbers, conventional. If we go participatory, the conventional wisdom is that it's only qualitative. Anything that's participatory can only be qualitative. What we're talking about this morning is this northeast quadrant, which is participatory numbers and statistics, and the discovery that, yes, they can do it but we need to facilitate. We need to convene and facilitate. Now, this is quite extraordinary, and you can, <coughs> you, you can have a closer look at it because you can't see it from a distance. This is, in, this is a participatory map in Sri Lanka. And very often the process of mapping is um, on the ground. First, who, who's, done, who's facilitating participatory mapping? That you have. Yeah. Yes, that's all right. Don't be shy. What <laughs> kind of it is right. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm a long time yeah. ago as well. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Probably a longer time than you. Um, but so, you, you yeah, I mean, you, you have to kind of put it in the ground and then people actually look into, they identify kind of the main center, say if it's like in a school, and then you start like you're talking about these two wells, for example. Depending on like what you know, the the villagers will actually give importance, and you start actually having the actually really in the ground, and then sometimes actually transfer this whole mapping to a kind of paper so that you can use it and you know, share for next time and yes. use it. For you can hear that. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, it, this and you it, use a lot exactly. of those materials, yes. sticks, and you know, yes. a lot of like you know, clippings, uh, leaves, the natural things too. And you can, I mean, people will, will, will they'll bring their own symbols yes. very often. And, um, and they'll their own categories, aren't they, as well? Really and and their, own their own categories. So that you, you can have certification of household in yes. levels, but not according to what you've generated, but according exactly. to how they think they've got a tin roof or a bike or a chicken or whatever. Yes. That's really, that's always the point about how robust, you know, categorization. See, one of the brilliant things about this is that if it's, if it's on the ground. We talk about the democracy of the ground. Have you heard that phrase? You see, if you, if you, if you, get, if you get down, maybe could, could two or three of you join me down here on the ground? Like, like this. I mean, if, if, we, if we imagine that we're, we're making a map or a diagram, can, can you imagine that? You know, that we're all contributing to that, so put your hand in, you know, we're doing this. Are we, are, we, are, we, are we looking? Is anybody yeah. dominating? No, no we're just doing it. Yeah. It's, you're you're yeah. just doing it. There's very little eye contact. Yeah. You see, when you're down in this position, you can't yeah. dominate in the same way. Yeah. The whole power relation becomes. It, it, it changes power relation. And the older men they stand like this. <laughs> <laughs> so they, it reverses the, the, you know, the men. It tends to be young people and women. Who get, who get down and actually do the, do the mapping. So in a way, they're expressing their reality. And one of the things we learned is that when it comes to, um, to aggregation for population, women are much better than men. And if men and women make maps separately, the women will then tease the men. <laughs> um, at least this is what I observed in Sri Lanka. They tease, they tease the, the men because the men had missed out some people. Whereas the women had got it, uh, got it absolutely right. He also worked, well, we had the experience of uh, doing it with um, Vicky, Vicky Johnson in oh, Sierra yes. Leone. So we were using it with children. Um, so, and what was interesting about it is that everyone got involved, all the children of different ages, and the head teachers and teachers kind of did that, stood around looking, and we had to kind of say, no, get involved, get down on the floor, because we were, we were trying to map out the safe spaces in the community that the children could uh, identify. Oh, how lovely. Was that in, in Brighton? In Sierra Leone. In Sierra Leone you were yeah. doing that? Yeah. Safe places for children. And they did that? Yeah. And... 
And was it then drawn on paper? Yeah, we then, well actually we photographed it and then we put it all together on paper with a small group of children, um, kind of like carefully mapping onto the paper what they what they could see from the pictures that we take. That's a lovely, they can really a, lovely a lovely example. And I mean another sort of example of this is um, women mapping uh, areas of danger for them, like when they're going to collect water or when they're going to the toilet or whatever. Um, so mapping by particular groups is, is, is a very powerful thing as well. You see, if you do it on the ground first, on the ground it's easy to alter things. If you do it straight on paper, one person will hold the pen and that person will be dominant. But on the ground everybody can put their hands in or anybody who gets down. So it's democratic. But then who, 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 who makes the map on the paper? Well, for us, it had to be the same. Do we? Do same. we or do they? But you have to be careful who among them. Yeah. Because I've, I've seen them. This was in Kenya. <laughs> oh, they were doing, they were doing a, a thing called Venn diagramming, which showed different organizations around the community. And the distance um, represented um, how they felt about it. So the forest department got a very big stone because it was very important. But they put, the women put it a long way away. But the person who transferred it to paper was a man. And he put the forest department <laughs> close in. So you've got to watch out um, when that transfer is, can also be an exercise of power. So this is what we're talking about. And um, here, these are our examples. This is an example in Gujarat. Um, they, they, they did it on bits of paper <coughs> um, with stickers. <coughs> so it could be done on paper with, with, with stickers or with symbols representing different things. I mean, they, one of their big categories was whether the children went to school in the village or outside the village. We would never have thought of that as a significant variable, but for them it was. <coughs> um, here, is an example um, from <coughs> Nepal, from Sindhupal Chowk, which has been very, very badly hit by the earthquake, where ActionAid had been working for 20 years or more. Um, and it's, and it's an absolute tragedy. But, but, and they're, they're doing terrific work at the moment in that, in that area. But in Sindhupal Chowk, what they did was, and this was, this was the breakthrough, it was ActionAid having a major methodological breakthrough in 1991. It's a long time ago. They used participatory mapping <coughs> in uh, over 130 communities. And they wanted to know the use of services which they'd introduced. And they produced numbers, just like a questionnaire. But because it was on the ground, because there was cross-checking, people can say, no, you've forgotten so-and-so. No, that's not true. They haven't got a toilet. You know, this sort of cross-checking goes on with a large number of people. You can be fairly sure that these figures are far more accurate than anything would have come out of a questionnaire survey. Questionnaire surveys tend to miss things. I'll give you an example. Uh, in an Indian village, when this was all developing, we had four different groups in different parts of the village, all using these methods. They were using different methods, but they were all visual to identify the population of the village. And they all came up with 355. And I thought they'd cooked it. I thought they must know this is the official figure. But then I came to realize, because these were groups of 10 to 15 people, each group, that there was no reason why any inaccuracy should enter at all. No one had any interest in distorting um, anything. They had a lot of interest, and you could see it. Judgment, observation, you can see the rigor of people making their adjustments, correcting one another. But in another community, which um, a colleague of mine, Jules Pretty, um, he was involved in, they came up with three different figures. And I'll just make them up. <coughs> um, 
325, 325, and um, 341. And when they came up with different figures like this, they wanted to know which was right. So there was further rigor of cross-checking, and they found that two of them had double counted the same household, and the largest one of all had included an outcast family on the edge of the community that the others had left out. So, you know, rigor, accuracy, pretty good in a case, in a case like this, I think. This here uh, is worth looking at. This is actually not the map that she's doing. It's another one. But they were organic farmers in Kenya. And she has, the, the two who did this, the two women who did this, they've drawn in nutrient flows, and then they've scored the nutrient flows for their importance within their farming system. And you, if you just reflect, well, uh, I mean, imagine a scientist, researcher, going to a farm and saying, I want to find out the different volumes and significance of the nutrient flows on your farm. And I'm going to do it by observing and all the rest of it. I mean, it would take weeks, and it, wouldn't, it would probably not be as accurate as this. And yet this was just an hour, a bit over an hour. So it, again, it's, it's, it's they, can, they can do it. Thank <laughs> you.